not physical. Hey, hey, Luke, can you hear us? No, I don't think he can hear us. His audio hasn't joined yet. Diogo is also joining us. Hey, hey, Luke, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, hey, thank you so much for uh, making the time and joining us for Office Hours. So uh, I think Diogo has also joined us. Uh, we'll wait for a couple of minutes, see if more people are joining us, and then we'll begin. Okay. Hi, Luke. Hey. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, he, he can hear us. Good stuff. Um, so we'll wait for a couple of minutes. Hey, Abhishek. So we'll wait for a couple of minutes and begin. Okay, uh, we'll start. So hey, hey, look and Diogo, thank you. Diogo, thank you so much for joining us. So the rest, everybody else on the call is from the AppSmith team. Um, so, so we'll be introduced uh, ourselves in a bit. So uh, the format for today's session essentially is we'll first have a free flowing conversation. Oh, give me one second, Naveen is joining the chat. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Naveen. So we were just going, uh, talking about the structure of today's office hours. Um, so basically, we'll, we'll have a free-flowing conversations where uh, you guys can start with the questions you have. We'll try to answer them, uh, resolve those issues. And then we have a few uh, features that are up in the pipeline. So we'll take some time, quickly talk about maybe our S3 integration, our new table widget that we are releasing, and some of the things Nikhil has in store for us. And, and then again, we can have, uh, so that's how we'll try to end it. So usually it's your questions, we'll have some sort of discussion and then a little bit about the widgets we have planned and your feedback and then questions about that. Uh, Makes sense? Perfect. Uh, so off onto Nikhil. So Nikhil, if you can just, uh, sorry. I mean, uh, if any of you have questions, we can begin there and then we'll go on about the features. I just had a tiny question. I'm not sure it's, I mean, I don't know if it's relevant for other people, but I'm just at the step where basically for now I'm hosting on my machine to test. Uh, but now I'll, I'll just bought a server and I'll put it on the server. And basically I was asking myself if it changes something to actually run the install script uh, on the server, or if I can just uh, basically put the file as they are on my, uh, I mean, put the files as they are in my computer on a GitLab project and then use the GitLab to sync as I would do for another project or if it changed something. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, what you mean is uh, you have, you've built something on your local machine and uh, now you're going to deploy it in a server. So you want to migrate all your apps uh, to the server, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so we give you, uh, so uh, the way we kind of think about it is um, uh, you can basically back up the Mongo instance uh, on your local, uh, you can dump it and then basically restore it uh, on the cloud. Uh, so we have yeah. this actually documented here in a how-to guide. I'm just pasting. Yeah, I've, I've seen it actually. Uh, ah, now it's in the doc before it was in, uh, yeah. in GitHub. Yeah. So we're, we're catching up on our documentation as well. Uh, so now we have yeah, a how-to okay. guide on how to do this. Uh, so hopefully this should just uh, work out for you. Um, yeah, okay, but just like basically between between running the install script and uh, just uh, putting the Docker, the Docker Compose file and everything, does it make a difference? I mean, is it better to still install with the script or? No, Arpit, do you want to take that? Sorry? Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, so our uh, migration is not as uh, smooth as GitLab. GitLab is like a golden, uh, you know, holy grail of moving from, you know, yeah. machine to machine. So we are not there yet. Uh, so what I would recommend is uh, on your server, uh, you just run the install script and get everything up and running. Uh, once everything mm -hmm. is running, you can then sort of uh, back up, uh, take a backup of your local Mongo and just dump it onto your uh, yeah. server's Mongo. And okay. uh, like that should just automatically just show all your data uh, as is. Uh, so and yeah, I don't know if you've seen, but on the doc, I mean, on the version of the doc that was on GitHub, I asked a question because I think um, I can find it somewhere. Uh, but 
I mean, basically, the way it's described now, you have to install MongoDump on the server, which defeats a bit the point of having it in a Docker. And I think you could, I mean, all, I mean, maybe if something I'm missing, normally you should be able to do it. You should be able to tell the Docker to make a MongoDump, and then you will have to add another, um, another folder to be able to get the MongoDump uh, or to load the MongoDump. Uh, but that seems doable. Uh, yeah, probably... uh, sorry. I, I think we'll update our documentation as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. we kind of given the, the core uh, Mongo commands. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think uh, what you've uh, suggested over there with uh, uh, Docker exec, uh, yeah. you know, Docker compose exec, I think that makes a lot more sense. Uh, and I think we'll, we'll just update our docs uh, with that okay. command in place. Uh, so initially when we'd written it, uh, I wasn't very sure whether people will sort of, uh, I thought it would make it easy to understand what the process is like. So I just given like the raw Mongo commands, mm -hmm. uh, but I think what you are suggesting is better and we'll just update the doc. So thanks for, you know, just- yeah, But I think I put, I had put the comment on the GitHub page, but now I don't find it. Uh, no, I can see it. Sorry, I, I ah, okay. for some reason okay. I missed this comment. Uh, otherwise I would have done this. Yeah, so you've already shared the Mongo dump command. Uh, yeah, but that, for, for some reason it was not working, but I'm not very good with this Docker stuff. So I'm, I think it's probably me missing something. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you see what I mean, I've no doubt yeah. that you would be able to do it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check okay. this out on my local and okay. I'll, I'll, I'll update the docs here. Thanks for pointing this out. Yeah. Uh, can I ask uh, what uh, cloud provider are you hosting on, uh, like AWS or something? Uh, the OVH, so it's the French one. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just because we were already using it for the website, so I mean, it's not a okay, cool. super informed choice, but yeah. Okay. Uh, no, the reason I was asking AWS is because we also provide like ready-made images, like AMI images, so you don't mm -hmm. have to run an install script. You can just pick it off the marketplace and just one-click install. So, ah, okay. So so, yeah, but I mean, in my case, that this server was also will also host my database. So in anywhere I have an install to do and some some stuff to do. But oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah, cool, cool, awesome. Uh, anything else, uh, Luke, that we can help you with? Uh, at the moment, no. I mean, I'm asking my question when I have them in the support chat. So it's uh, so far I have I have nothing. Cool, cool, awesome. Awesome. So, uh, Naveen or Diego, if, if if any of you want to go next, Diego, you can just text it up, uh, send it to us on chat, and I'll just read it out. Uh, hey guys, uh, I'm Naveen. Um, I am the founder of Extreme Cloud. So I happen to come across uh, Apps this week. And I happen to join your Discord today, and I thought I'd join and see what means. how to try this. I haven't tried it, uh, but it looks exciting. What you guys are doing? Awesome, welcome. So, uh, well, do you have any plans of building anything uh, uh, on AppSmith, uh, Naveen? Any uh, specific tool that you're looking to build? Uh, See one of uh, so uh, I can tell you about Action Cloud. Action Cloud is also an uh, open source product, so we do create the rest and graph calculators on top of databases and all that. So one of our customers was using Retool, and uh, yeah, I mean they had a pretty interesting use case, and the way uh, the whole Retool worked was was amazing. And, and they said there's something called Ashmet, which is an uh, open source space. So I looked up, yeah, I, this company knew me. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we're really looking forward to your feedback then on our product. Uh, anything you think that we can do better, anything that uh, you know you feel is missing, please just uh, let us know. We're all yours. Sure, sure. No, not a problem. Like we, we two guys can try testing cloud, and uh, we'll be happy to learn feedback on your side. I think from whatever uh, I saw one of your videos, it looks amazing actually. Uh, that's I have to try. Hey Diogo, just saw your message. Uh, so honestly, we, we've all blocked our time to help the community today. So you can ask a lot of questions and don't worry about it being fair uh, from our end. So 
if you want to like come back later that's cool but if you have any burning problems that you want solved you can obviously tell us now and uh, navin thank you so much for joining us today uh, glad to see another open source uh, company uh, join us Uh, Navin, if you don't mind, can you ping your your GitHub link or your open source link in the chat? Would love to check out your project. So, you can simply search that. Uh, Luke, uh, anything uh, you think that uh, we can do um, specifically during these office hours? Anything you'd like to discover? Uh, any information you'd like us to share? Um, no, I think, yeah, I mean, I think I discussed already quite a lot in the support chat. So uh, I have the feeling now I see, I mean, for me, clearly one of the limitations that I see is related to the binding between the the UI and the, and the backend, but something you already identified. So, I mean, I understand it's not going to be there until some months and for now it's not blocking, but so it's good, uh, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's the, I would say the main pain point is probably that the UI sometimes, if you have a lot of uh, fields, at some point it becomes a bit slow. And also if you want to do some stuff that are not super simple with the, with the JavaScript uh, fields, then you always have this very tiny stuff. I mean, you cannot really edit it there. You need to basically always switch between something and that, but I'm quite sure you already identified this uh, as pain points, but I mean, it's still very cool in terms of what it allows to do. And I mean, in the end, I, I think I can probably finish building my app. I mean, then uh, in, in like another week probably, and. I think it's it's very fast, so it's it's super cool that uh, yeah. I mean, I'm very very super happy with uh, both the product and how responsive you have been on the support, and like yeah, it's very nice, uh, very nice experience for sure. It's awesome. Yeah, I think uh, actually Arpit is uh, going to be helping out in uh, building the JS editor, so that's going to be like a huge problem that we chat tackle soon, where we'll just have like a much better editing experience on AppSmith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So on the roadmap is like a, a full-fledged uh, JS editor. So we understand like nobody writes like writing in like sixty characters long windows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, so we are kind of doing like a full-fledged uh, 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 you know JS editor. Uh, can I ask uh, what code editor do you use? Do you use like VS Code? Do you use WebStorm? Uh for now, I mean, I, the, what I did was not so big either. And it's also quite always a bit repetitive. So I just have a text editor uh, on the side. So uh, I really use nothing, uh, but I mean, I probably could do it better, but I also think it's now I'm almost there to what I want. So yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, for me, the only thing that's missing now in what I'm building is, I mean, I still have lots of fields that I have to add to my UI, but that I need to discuss with the people that, uh, you know, how, have the, the idea of what to do. And the other stuff is uh, integrating this S3 plugin that uh, is probably going to be ready next week, uh, as I heard. It should be out, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and that will be the last big thing. And then, I mean, then I will have to listen to feedback and stuff, but uh, it's going to be done. So it's still quite impressively fast. Cool, awesome. Uh, uh, Luke, so uh, you also mentioned that, you know, uh, when you have a lot of, uh, you know, widgets or you have complicated apps, it apps might slows down for you. Uh, you know, if, if uh, is it possible for us to kind of see uh, the yeah, app? Of course. Like, yeah, like, I, mean, I, mean, uh, I, I can share my screen. I mean, yeah. my app is, is nothing uh, too private. Uh, it just, I mean, typically, uh, if I, so yeah, if I, once I have a lot of fields, uh, doing stuff like, uh, you know, well, I mean, already what I'm doing, but just going there. And, uh, if I, if I want to retype this, for example, um, mm -hmm. see, I mean, now I'm typing and it's always a bit slow. And here, if I, I mean, I always want to press enter, but actually enter doesn't select uh the ah okay well sometimes this time it did 
but normally tab is working and clicking also doesn't work for some reason. But I mean, this is all related to this uh, stuff. I mean, clearly it's a bit slow to react because it's evaluating a lot of stuff. I mean, it, for me, it's, it's not a big problem because this is also something you do once and then it's done. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, yeah. uh, so and, uh, and the thing that was very slow was for some reason, the select query which is yeah because i didn't put in pagination yet and basically if the if there's a lot of row uh, i mean wanting to change anything in this query is super slow but i guess with pagination it would be better and um yeah also it's not super i mean i understand that it's slow and that's okay got it uh, uh can i ask like how many records does your query return like when you say it's not paid but like well one... that's actually one of the latest oh. record and that's the id so yeah 1700 or something like that okay that's actually not a lot no but act i mean if you i mean going on the page it loads quite fast so it's not um okay i don't know what's happening now uh, maybe i oh, don't know Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, that is much slower than usual. Normally, it's working. No, uh, generally, with screen sharing, your CPU gets hogged by the... By yeah, Zoom maybe. Hogs, but so I mean, if I do... So if I do that, that's going to make another search. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know if the search will return something. And it, is it always this slow, even in the deployed version as well? No, you know? no, no, no. It's not that slow in the deployed version. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay, so so uh, so what we'll do is uh, internally we'll also sort of create like a test app. Like I can see you have a tab widget like with some six seven tabs. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I will, so we'll kind of replicate this internally as well and try to sort of. Actually, the tab I was quite uh, impressed. It doesn't doesn't seem to make any difference. Um, and sometimes I have tabs in tabs, and it's so far it was all very smooth. I was a bit worried about it, but uh, no. Um, hey, look. So you, you mentioned something about uh, uh, running something. This uh, your queries from Excel, right, or Google Sheets? Yes. So this is because basically, if I want, so because I have, I mean, now this is just like one part of the screen of the field that I have. I will have like ninety fields in total, and so if you see my update query. I mean, the, like, the main queries are, of course, like select, create, and update. And the update query will have a lot of lines. Yeah, OK, like this. And so to manage that, what I have is, no, not this one, sorry. Green. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you're seeing the, yes, you're seeing it. No, it's loading. Uh, I have this spreadsheet, which hopefully is loading. Yes, where well, I have my my field lists, and basically uh, then I did like I mean I did just spreadsheet stuff to basically have um, my right. queries like based on the type of SQL field and the type of input that it just uh, generates that, and basically then I can just take this column, copy it, and paste it. And basically, hopefully, I don't have to do any manual edits, and I can just uh, make everything and everything works. And, and as long as I name the inputs correctly, uh, it should take the data. So I mean, that was just for me because otherwise, it's impossible to do by hand. And but yeah, yeah. Uh, and actually, I have one more question, which is not related to that at all, which is, I mean, for me, one of the problems that I will have, actually, I can, yeah, hopefully that's the deployed. I mean, I use the store a lot to store, I mean, typically, okay, when I select a document, uh, it, I just put it in the store, and then this is the form to edit it, or from the main list, which is on another page to the form, I guess it's what everybody's doing. And my problem is that, I mean, there's stuff that I store uh, also for fields. For example, I have this stuff where, I mean, this, like, put this in, in another store, uh, in another field. So this is all, like, uh, stuff that is stored in the store. 
And if I um, if I now I put stuff in the store, and if I navigate, I mean, if I if I click the green button that is like come back, then I I put everything to null, and I have no problem. But actually, if I navigate like this, and I choose another record, and I go back on edits, then now the store will still have the old values. And for me, I I mean, I don't know what's the the best way to solve this problem. One way will be to just delete this tab and have everybody. I mean, have the pages, but no way to navigate to them. Just the button, so that I can always make sure that the state is uh, is correct. Um, yeah, you see, I mean, you see here the value is still there because it's from uh, another record. Um, and, but I'm not sure if it's maybe it's me who should do something differently. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no. So so the store is like a global store across your uh, across the entire app. So in fact, a lot of users use the store to pass, uh, you know, data between pages. Yeah. So that's why even when you're switching between pages, your store still has that data. Mm -hmm. uh, one. Uh, okay. What could you do? So right now on page switch, we don't have like a a, a function that you can run. So you can run like APIs or DB queries on when a page loads or on page switch. How do you do? I mean, is there a way to just execute not an API, but just a query, uh, just a JS on page load? Yeah. So just the JS part is coming along with the JS editor. Uh, but ah, okay. APIs and database queries you can run on page load. The yeah. JS function you can't execute yet. Uh, yeah. So that's on the cards. Uh, okay. Till then, And and I I had the same question. I mean, what happens if I open the app in many in different tabs? Is the store shared across the tabs, or is the store one per tab? Actually, we can test. But it's an application wide store. Okay, so I mean, even if I now if I duplicate my tab and I choose another uh, another record, it's gonna stay the same. I'm still gonna have. Will it still stay in another tab also? I thought uh, the local storage you're talking about, right? Uh, the store value function. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. that's based on the domain, right? Exactly. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. That's where we can test very easily. Uh, where is it? This is... Yes. Yeah, is... yeah, yeah, across tabs. Yeah, yeah, still have the value here. Okay. Well, I mean, that's not the, that's not a huge problem because yeah, I don't think the user is gonna want to do that. But okay, mm -hmm. it's weird because these are still not changed. Huh. Okay. Well, anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, I think I'm uh, at the end of my questions. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh uh, awesome. I, I'd actually just love to uh, share some designs around our JS return, what we are planning to do. So uh, this is sort of uh, what we're thinking about for our entire JS returning experience. Um, we're basically going to add a new section over here called JavaScript, where we'll have like multiple JavaScript files that you can actually create. And it'll open up an uh, entire VS code experience like this. Uh, and over here, uh, what will happen is you'll be able to create a class file. So the class file will uh, by default have a run function. And uh, the run function is uh, the function where you write uh, any type of multi-line code and you can return one variable to the run function. So you can define what type the response should be like. Uh, you can execute your code here. You can call multiple APIs, uh, multiple DB queries uh, using async await. And then you can just uh, return the results uh, directly over here. And then once you've named this uh, class well, uh, you can then go ahead and utilize this class anywhere in the application. So if you want to call that directly, uh, you can just say like table dot run from here, for example, or you can also make use of that uh, somewhere else. Uh, like for example, in the property pane over here, you can just directly reference the data of the JavaScript function over here. That's sort of the idea behind the entire JavaScript experience. Uh, also, I, I, I heard you talking about like executing JavaScript uh, on page load. So this will be supported with this because we'll have a settings over here where we can just say run this function on page load. So if you want to do something specific, like whenever this page loads, uh, do you want to navigate to a different section? Do you want to check if the user is authenticated and then take him to login page or, or 
uh, you know, take him to another page. You can do all of those, uh, you know, complicated logics on page load over here. So this will actually enable us to write a lot of logic uh, uh, in this section. Um, and we'll also have like a couple of helper snippets, things to help you transform data, to help, things to help you create workflows, stuff like that. So that, that's like largely the idea uh, around this. Well, that's super cool. So yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, we should hopefully be able to start working on this uh, in a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully like next uh, uh, two months, we should hopefully get this out. Cool. Uh, is there anything like specific you'd want us to support uh, inside like a JS editor like this? No, I mean, for me, uh, this is already great. I mean, of course, because it's nicer than what we have now. But also, I mean, possibly if there is something to see, like what's in the store currently when you're in the editor. Uh, I mean, in the end, it's not so difficult because I just put a text field and put all the store in it. And then you see everything. It's not like very far away, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think store visibility is missing. We were thinking of probably maybe adding it inside the entity explorer itself as another entity here. So you can just expand and view everything that's underneath uh, stored currently in the store. Um, that's one option. Um, yeah. I don't know, maybe we can explore more design options, but yeah, that's a great point. We definitely need visibility into the store. Yeah, maybe we can add it in the debugger as well. Uh, look, your feedback is actually really useful. Like, you know, whenever you have these, like just drop it on Discord or raise a GitHub issue, or, you know, we'll just make use of it to just make the product much, much better. Okay, sure, thanks. Awesome. Uh, cool, uh, do you have any other questions uh, before we move on to like uh, just a couple of, uh, like demoing just a few things that we're planning to uh, launch in uh, the next week or so? I'm good with questions. Any, uh, Anything you guys want to ask before we launch into the demos? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's for the advanced use case or something, but it's possible to inject a required statement. Like if you want to include a package, a single package uh, within this JavaScript. So I couldn't quite hear that. Uh, it means if you can. Uh, like if I want to include, say, certain package from Node.js, would it be possible to do so um, within this editor? I think it's pure JavaScript as of, as, as of now, if I understand correctly, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, so that's something that uh, we definitely do want to support, uh, where uh, just different NPM packages uh, should be able to uh, sort of uh, be loaded on the fly. Um, today we do that manually. So if there's like any package that's missing, uh, you can just ping us on Discord. Uh, mm -hmm. But we do want to also add, uh, you know, an option uh, basically over here. So this is why the dependencies has a plus. So, uh -huh. you know, when you hit it, uh, basically it just gives you an option to en enter the NPM URL. Uh, and then that just uh, downloads the package and runs it on the fly. Oh, that, that is cool. That's cool. Awesome. Great. Cool. So uh, then let me just uh, deep dive into a couple of uh, things that uh, we're planning on uh, showcasing in the next uh, week or so. So the first is uh, basically we're uh, improving our table widget. Um, so today our table is kind of very simplistic. Um, it uh, gives you a lot of functionality out of the box, but it doesn't allow, give you enough power over the, uh, over the individual columns. So what we've gone and done is uh, for every single table, um, now you can actually control the properties of each column as well in the property pane. So what this means is that uh, if you want to, let's say, update the uh, the ID, right? And maybe you want to add a hash in front of the ID. We can actually go ahead and just directly do this over here. Instead of having to write our entire mapper function, we can go ahead and update the computed value of the uh, ID of the column right over here. Um, the other thing that we can do now is also apply styles to all of our columns. So this was currently not possible. Um, and we can also make the styling conditional. So to give you an example of this, um, if we, uh, let's say, we want to have a conditional style on the order amount, saying that uh, any orders that are really large, maybe orders above $10, we want to highlight them in a particular color, as well as orders below $10, we want to highlight them in a different color. So what we can do is we can say, let's look at the current row, and let's look at the order amount field. And if the order amount is greater than $10, 
um, then what we can do is let's flag it as red. Otherwise, let's flag it as uh, green. Right. So conditionally, we can actually apply styles all across the board now uh, for our columns. And this is true for pretty much every single uh, you know, uh, style value over here. You can align it, you can uh, change the colors, you can change the text sizes. Uh, pretty much everything can be conditional. And we can also do it based on the values of other parts of the table. So for example, uh, we can also do it for the uh, username field instead. So instead we can say the username dot grades. I see that. So then it should be red, if not. So you can basically write a conditional function on top of pretty much any part of the table because um, you have access to the current row, uh, which means that uh, based on any other value inside this row, you can actually update the values of this column. So that's one thing that we've done differently now in this table. Uh, the other thing that we've done is we've also introduced the concept of collapsible uh, sections. So all of these sections in the property pane, now they're collapsible. So it makes it a lot easier to navigate the property pane now, rather than having to, uh, you know, because sometimes uh, if the property pane is too long, it's very difficult to scroll. But now these collapsible sections, hopefully configuration should become a lot easier. Um, and also we can now update the, the type of the columns right over here. So let me give you an example of that. Um, let's go ahead and query a database. <clears throat> hey, Nikhil. So Diogo just asked us about tables. Can you have a simple table or one table that he can remove or hide the download filter and customize the size of the table? So you can just check your chat. Got it. Uh, so I, I do remember uh, seeing the uh, option to uh, hide the download. Uh, so this so what we'll also do, uh, Diogo, is uh, we'll give you an, an option over here so that uh, you can just, uh, you know, disable download for this table. So we'll add a new uh, switch over here so that uh, this will get disabled and post that you won't have that problem. I hope that works. Okay. Let me also have a look at the can chat. Can you also show, uh, Diego, how to uh, size the table? You can change the row height of the table. Uh, so do you, do you right. want so to changing the overall height of the table to increase the row height? You can simply click here and make it either taller or shorter. So this allows you to sort of change the entire height, uh, as well as you can go ahead and style the entire table. So if you want to, let's say, set the table background color to this, you can do that over here. Or if you want to, let's say, change the text color, you can do that as well. And uh, maybe you want to change the text size to really large or to really small. Pretty much all of those are supported right in this table. So we're giving a lot more ability to style the entire table. And we'll also, uh, you know, because you've asked for it, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll add the option to disable download and the filter button. We'll go ahead and do that. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, the changes to the table. The other change that we're doing to the table, uh, okay, we're letting me also just fetch the new data. So fetch users dot data. Ah, sorry, I had I had one question while we are on the table. Um, do uh, for the moment the filters are only on the columns that you see, uh, and is there a plan to be able to make a filter on the columns you don't see? Uh, you mean these filters over here? You should be able exactly. to filter pretty exactly. much anything. the column, it, it's get a wig and yeah, it's not there anymore. Oh, okay. Let me try that. So you're saying uh, basically hiding the name, you're not able to filter the name anymore. Uh, no, I think you can still filter by the name. Ah. Right. If that's not happening, that might be an issue with our current table, but yeah, with this, you should be able to filter by the name. Let me check on mine, but okay. Then if not, that's already fixed in the new version, so that's great. Uh, yeah, this filter is perfectly based on the name of that. Yeah, and what you can also do now is, for example, configure the avatar uh, to have an image right over here instead. So pretty much all configurations for different data types can be done right inside the columns. 
and uh, we're also supporting uh, going to go ahead and support new types like checkboxes and um, graph downs and uh, date pickers right inside the table as well so that will help us make the table editable and um, today what you can also do for example is create a new column called the custom column and this custom column for example can have any kind of value that you want to create um, a simple example could be that maybe you have the MRP and the listing price in the table, and maybe you want to show the um, margins in the third column. So we can call this like, for example, margin, right? And now you can go ahead and configure the margin over here to basically subtract the MRP from the listing price. So that's also possible in this new table. Uh, I can just go ahead and carry some products for this. So I can say, for example, um, current row dot um, MRP minus current row dot listing price. So what this will do is actually go ahead and create like a new third column for me, which is called margin. So you can also create additional columns on the fly uh, based on computed values from different table, from different uh, values of the current table. Sorry, I didn't get what you were saying on on drop downs and on uh, date picker do you mean that we will be able to change the values directly in the table yeah so uh, let me give you an example uh, so a third example could be uh, let's say i add a column over here <clears throat> i'll call this uh, edit right and uh, what the edit column will do uh, so right now it's just an empty column but i can make it a button mm -hmm. for example so now automatically a button shows up here and what I can also do is say uh, on button click, this is called this edit. Uh, so on button click, I can go ahead and open a modal. Ah, okay. Right. And I can go ahead and update values. But what we're also going to allow you to do is change this uh, this button over here to, for example, a a date picker. So maybe uh, right now, um, sorry, right now the margin is, for example, a um, uh, it's a text field. But maybe you want to give users the ability to edit the margin directly here, right? Or maybe you want to put a checkbox to say uh, enable or disable for this particular user. So you'll be able to create a new column and add the checkbox right over here and and configure an action that should happen on check or on okay. date selected. So yeah, that okay. way you can actually go ahead and write logic to custom the table in place. Yeah, so that's also pretty much coming up uh, in the right after we launched this version of the table. Yeah, so the, these are some of the changes that uh, we're currently doing. Uh, the other change that we're doing um, is the uh, co-auth change. So we're going to support- the Hey, OAuth Nikhil, I think uh, Diogo had one more question. Uh, what we're doing like- On chat, on about the table. Oh, okay, sorry, I can't. So he's asking, okay. can we hide the font size uh, when the table is published? Can that be disabled? Uh, the font size, I don't think the font size is available. Where do you see the font size is available? So he, he means the row height, the you, the, the default short and tall. Yeah. Uh, he means okay. disable this, that in view mode, yeah. Right. So basically all three of these options as uh, configuration whether you want to enable or disable them. Hmm. Uh, did I get that right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so, Diego, I think uh, you uh, you uh, you had created a GitHub issue. Uh, please just uh, leave these details in that GitHub issue. We'll uh, get to that as well. That that's pretty much the best way to just get things done. GitHub issues and uh, just telling us that hey, I really want this. I really want this. Cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, the other feature that uh, we're sort of uh, launching pretty soon is going to be our OAuth. Uh, so with this, you can just directly talk to Google APIs, uh, uh, to uh, pretty much any SaaS service that uh, has OAuth to. Uh, you can simply configure your grant type, uh, your uh, request headers, your uh, you know uh, client ID, client secret, um, and uh, basically just save this and get, get an authorization code. Um, the flow is fairly simple. Once you do this, you're, you're Essentially, directed to uh, grant uh, you know access to this particular uh, account, 
and um, over here of course our google uh, app isn't uh, verified right now but yours can be or you can use ours as well this basically will grant uh, your absolute api the access to uh, your particular uh, uh, you know uh, account uh, and then you can just go ahead and query uh, your sheets from here so, so that's uh, that's sort of uh, what we are currently building uh, this will allow us to talk to pretty much any SaaS service out there so this is like very exciting this is uh, going to allow us to talk to like tons and tons of integrations Uh, cool. So I think uh, this is the last thing that you wanted to demo is uh, this. Uh, sorry, uh, Luke, did you have something you wanted to say? No, no, this is super cool. I mean, that's powerful. Awesome. Uh, so the last thing uh, we wanted to just uh, demo is uh, uh, our new S3 plugin. Uh, so Sumit, uh, I'm just going to hand it off to you. Uh, why don't you just show us how the S3 plugin works? Uh, thanks, Nikhil. Uh, yeah, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see? Yep, we can see it. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be a small demo. Uh, let me show you one uh, small use case. Uh, so uh, imagine that you have uh, uh, you, uh, you know certain uh, images stored in your S3 bucket, and then uh, based on the data in your table, you want to display uh, uh, image based on the selected row. So for example, this is a small use case based on uh, the example. Uh, now I have two uh, images stored in my bucket, uh, which, and uh, I have fetched their name and assigned URL, uh, which then I use in the uh, image widget uh, to display the image. Uh, so if you look into the image, what it is table one dot selected row, and then the column name here is one. Uh, okay, let me walk you through uh, from the beginning. Let me show you how to uh, create a, a data source on S3 and then how to create a query. Okay. So you click on the new data source, you have Amazon S3. Uh, you need an access key, secret key, uh, which you can get from your AWS account. Uh, details of how to get it is also available uh, on our documentation. Uh, now, I already have one uh, data source created, so we'll just use it. Uh, if you go on a new query, uh, so we have four uh, different types of action that we support. Uh, list files in a bucket, which uh, will show you all of the files in your bucket along with the signed URLs. Uh, create a new file, which you can use to uh, create a new file or upload a file. Uh, read a file, so essentially it reads the file content. You need to provide the bucket name and file name. And then the fourth option is delete file. So I have some queries already prepared for us. Uh, okay, so this is a read files query. So this is the uh, data format. So if you notice, I also have used a prefix here because I have uh, a lot of other uh, files as well. Uh, so I'm essentially interested in the images. So what I have here is, uh, is the name of the file and this is a signed URL. Uh, now, uh, this is another query, which is a create file. Uh, so you can keep the name of the file here. Uh, if you are, uh, interested, you can also provide a directory name like this, and it will create a, a, a directory for you if it doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, and uh, in this box, uh, you can either write a, a text here, which will get uh, uploaded to the file, or you can pick a file from your system and upload it. So the example that I have here is for picking up a file from the system. Uh, a file picker widget is used here. Uh, and uh, this is a, a read file query. Uh, so it is essentially reading the content of this file, hello world.txt. Uh, so let me, let me show you how the uh, results are bound together. So I have a read file query from which I have fetched uh, image name and URL. And then 
what I have done here is I have found the data uh, into my table. So now I have uh, uh, the data of a read file query in my table. And then uh, I have an image widget where based on selected row, uh, I pick up the URL. So essentially, uh, whichever row I select, the URL uh, image is displayed here. Uh, Uh, hello, uh, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, are there any questions uh, from your side? Uh, any clarifications or maybe how we can do it better? Or how you would want to use it? Uh, I mean, for me, it's great. I mean, already, I mean, the ability to list files and to get them. How easy would it be to then uh, to put a download button just put a download button and then say navigate to the URL in the new tab and that would work, no? Uh, you mean a download button? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that is that is also uh, possible. So what you can do is you can uh, get a button. Uh, so you have a button here uh, and you can uh, select your action as download. And then you can just pass the uh, uh, query. Uh, so there is a read query, right? So you can pass the read query data here. And then if you click, it should be able to download the file directly. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so essentially you can you can uh, download or upload any kind of file, a text file, an image, or a video. So. Uh, and do you have, I mean, in the future, do you will you want to do something that will look like more a file navigator or? Or will it stay with the list like that? I mean, it's already good. I'm not uh, not saying. Uh, you mean a I file navigator? Sorry. A, a file navigator specifically well, for this. You know, because I mean, in the end, now we see a list of files, and it's just like for a user, uh, like a normal user, it doesn't really look like. Uh, a folder or something like that and in the end it's just a matter of combining i mean you already have all the things necessary to list the files and uh, to yeah I, I don't know but i mean i understand it's definitely much more work uh than this i mean this is much more important for me because i'm going to use it and it works so it's good but if at some point there is a fancier version with a nice uh yeah browser uh would be super nice okay Okay. Uh, yeah, about file explorer, maybe uh, Nikhil can talk about it. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we actually have, have a feature request for uh, this particular widget. So uh, we have been thinking about it. Uh, one thing that uh, is really good is that we already have a grid widget coming out soon. So what you can do is basically uh, just list the files uh, in a grid widget. Um, depending on which files are uh, sort of uh, getting responded and you can make that work like a file navigator. So if you click on, you know, a particular folder, uh, you can show it like an icon. If you click on it, then you can like just take it down to the, you know, next directory and show what's underneath that. So the grid widget will allow like a lot of these complex use cases, but in the future, we'll definitely build a more complex uh, file navigator that's tightly coupled with S3. Cool. Cool. Uh so uh, uh, should I stop uh, sharing the screen or if there are any other questions or suggestions, you can take it. Okay. Well, uh, I don't have any more questions. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Then let me. Awesome. Uh, so uh, if, if there's nothing else, I think we can uh, conclude. The... Okay, yeah, Diogo has one more question. Go ahead, Diogo. Well, Diego is under a lot of pressure. Everybody's just waiting for this question. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that too, intently staring at that uh, <laughs> chat, chat box also. Uh, no, no pressure, Diego, no pressure. Take your time. <laughs> So Diego was asking, yeah, 
please go ahead Nick. so uh, if i understand your question correctly um to invite uh, users on premise do they have a functional email um so yeah i would say like uh, so okay actually no they don't they don't necessarily need one because uh, uh, if you're signing up via the form login uh, we don't actually validate your email uh, so what you can do is when you deploy them on prem uh, you can just invite an email id for example if uh, your email id is uh, diogo at appsmith.com uh, nobody's going to verify whether that email id actually exists you can just go ahead and invite somebody with that uh, email and then allow them to go ahead and sort of set up those credentials uh, am i right uh, in understanding this up uh, arpit uh yeah so uh so yeah so the 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 only problem with not having a functional email is that you know like forgot password links won't work uh you can't like they won't actually get an invitation email so today in app smith i can invite you to our say like my app i can invite you to my app but if that email doesn't exist you you literally won't get that invitation but having said that uh are you if i invite you at one at the rate test.com and i ask and i ping you on slack and i say that uh, diego please sign up with one at the rate test.com if you sign up with that same email id you will get uh, access like whatever wherever you've been invited you will get access so no it is not uh, uh, essential but i would say it's highly highly recommended uh so yeah awesome so and anything else diego <laughs> awesome uh, thank thanks diego uh so guys thank you so much for attending so we'll conclude the session today so we'll we'll take this session we'll shorten it a little bit and post it online we'll also try to post transcript so we are setting up a youtube channel etc to host the videos once we do that we'll let you know on discord and you can see it on our website and github as well uh so thank you so much guys for your time and your questions and most importantly your feedback uh this is really helps us with our product roadmap and how we think about our features so it's it's super helpful for us as well hope you also found this helpful and yeah thanks again hope to see you soon bye uh, thank you you but thank you to you thank you, you. see you soon bye bye